All right, well, let me give you one more part to the problem. Now we know that now that we have the A, B, and C object stuck together, they're going to start compressing the spring. But the spring will not compress forever. The spring will not compress forever. Eventually, it will get to a point of maximum compression when it can't compress anymore. So the final question is, how far will the spring compress by the time it gets to its maximum compression? At the maximum compression, how far will the spring have compressed? So let's take a couple of seconds and think about uh, what would be our approach for that. about just what the general approach is. For example, okay. for this first question, we used conservation of energy. Then for the second question, we used conservation of momentum. Then for the third question, we used conservation of momentum. So we need a kind of a general approach for this last part of the problem. Um, so one thing that might help here now is, uh, well, this is not a collision anymore. Uh, we simply have a single object that's moving from one place to another. We have a single object that's moving from one place to another. Um, oh, and here's another point. Do you remember, when is work and energy a good approach? Um, when you're uh, trying to, when you're dealing with uh, speed and distance. But notice that's what our question is about here. What distance will the spring compress? Okay, of course, sometimes when you're dealing with speed, uh, it's good to use conservation of momentum, but that's for collisions. So if you have a single object and you're worried about uh, speed or distance, usually conservation of energy is the way to go. So now we're going to use conservation of energy again. Um, so, what was our general formula for conservation of energy? That was net work by the non-conservative forces equals delta E. Alright, so um, in order to know what the work is, we're going to have to identify the forces on this object. So, uh, now I'll call it a combined, uh, now we have a combined object. Let's now combine A, B, and C. So, what are the forces on that object? Now, the mass itself is not a force, but... It's a, it's a, well, it's a... So I think we're thinking of the yeah. weight? Yeah, the weight. Yeah, so and then we have the weight, so... Mm -hmm. That's down. And the other force is... The normal force. Which is straight up. Straight up. And one more force. And the spring force. What direction will the spring be pushing in? Um, it's going to be pushing opposite the movement, so it's going to be pushing to the left. Yeah, that's good. That's right. The spring doesn't want to be compressed. So the spring force is going to push in this direction. Okay, good. All right, and we have to decide whether any of those are going to do work that we have to include on the left-hand side over here. Okay, well, um, let's see. Is the weight going to do any work that we have to include here? No. No, because the weight is a conservative force. Uh, and we only want the work done by the non-conservative forces. Okay? Is the spring force going to do any work that we have to include on the left-hand side? Um, yes, because it's parallel to the movement. Now, it will do work. Now, what are the conservative forces? One of the conservative forces is the weight, and there's one other conservative force. I don't remember if we talked about that. Do you know what the other conservative force is besides the weight? The two conservative forces are the weight and the spring force. Okay. I don't know. I don't think we've had an example of that yet, but that would be a good thing to have in your notes now. Um, so, in this semester of the course, the only conservative forces you're going to see are the spring force and the weight. There are other conservative forces, uh, but for this semester of the course, you're only going to see the weight and the spring force. Okay, um, so the spring force is also a conservative force. So, should it get included over here? No, because we only want to include the work by the non-conservative forces. So, you're right that the spring force would do work, but it doesn't get included because that's work by a conservative force. Okay. And is the normal force going to do any work that we have to include here? No, because it's perpendicular. To yeah, it's again perpendicular to the movement. So the normal force is non-conservative, but it's going to do zero work. So this left-hand side here ended up being zero again. All right, and we know that when we get this form of the equation, it's best, if you're saying delta E is zero, it's best to just rewrite that as E initial equals E final. Okay, I keep saying initial and final. So now I should be saying 
Uh, let's see, where were we? I guess we were at E in situation four, and we want to find E in situation five, because we just finished off finding the speed in situation four. So that'll be the initial situation here, and then we'll end up with situation five, and then I think we'll call it a day. No more situations after that. Okay. So, uh, all right. So what types of energy do we have to take into account here? Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy. And, um, um, sorry, um, potential, the gravitational potential energy. Good. Anything else? Is there any, so what's the other type of potential energy besides gravitational? The spring potential energy. That's right. And there definitely is the spring in this case. Um, when do you include the spring potential energy? Well, when the spring is compressing or contracting. So why didn't we use spring energy before now? Because even though there was a spring before, it wasn't compressing or contracting. We only need to worry about the spring energy if it's compressing, if it's compressing or expanding, I should say. If it's compressing or expanding, otherwise the spring energy isn't going to change. If the spring energy is not changing, we don't care about that. So now we can include the spring energy. So the basic principle for conservation of energy is we only have to pay attention to the energies that are changing. We only care about the energies that are changing. Otherwise, if you just put the same energy on both sides, they would just cancel out anyway. If you just put the same energy on both sides, it would just cancel out eventually anyway. So we only need to pay attention to the energies that are changing. Well, we would expect the speed to be changing here, so we have to include the translational kinetic energy. And we expect the uh, spring to be contracting here, so we have to include the spring energy. But the height's not changing, so even if you put in the gravitational energy, it would just be the same number on both sides, and it would cancel out. So these are the two energies we care about here. Okay. Now, a lot of the time, some of the energies are zero. This is maybe a little bit trickier than before. Um, when will any of these energies be zero? One thing we should do is remember what's the formula for spring energy. Do you know what the formula is for the spring energy? Good. And what does the X stand for? from the natural length. So the x is the displacement from the natural length. x is how much we've been displaced from the natural length. Yeah, I don't remember how much we've talked about that, but x is our displacement from our natural length. All right, so can you see any of these terms that would ever be zero here on the left or the right-hand side? Um, well, it, it's moving in the beginning, right? So the translational kinetic energy is not yeah. zero. So, yeah. Yeah. This definitely exists because it is moving. Um, That's right. Uh, this, the initial spring energy, the when it first collides, it's at its natural length and it's not being contracted, so that would drop out as a term. That's okay. equal zero. Good. Yeah. That's right. That's good. So at this point, initially x is zero. Mm -hmm. Remember, x is the displacement from the natural length, but it's safe to assume that we started at the natural length. We must have started at the natural length. So initially, there was no energy stored in the spring. Okay, good. And then, can we find anything that's zero on the right-hand side? No. This well, is a little tricky. Sorry. It's, I don't know. See, I would say no because the spring is going to continue to move if the object has enough. Right. Now, remember what was the question? The question was asking for the maximum compression. Right. So. Um, we should say what our final position looks like. So our final position is going to look something like this will be our situation uh, 5 when we're at the maximum compression, right? So notice you're, you're right that the spring, if there's no friction, the spring will keep on oscillating forever. But we're not going to be watching it forever. We're going to stop the experiment when we get to the maximum compression. Well, what's happening at the maximum compression? When you're at the maximum compression, the object is changing direction, right? Because the instant before it got to maximum compression, the object was still moving slowly to the right. And the instant after we're at maximum compression, it's going to start moving to the left. That's what maximum compression means. Maximum compression really means the instant that we stop moving to the right and start moving to the left. Because you're right, the, uh, the spring is never going to stop moving if there's no friction. It'll keep going right and left forever if there's no friction. 
but there is going to be one instant when it stops moving to the right and starts moving to the left, and that's the, the maximum compression. That's what we're trying to figure out over here. When is it going to shift from moving to the right to moving to the left? But what's the speed of an object when it changes direction? Yeah, I think we've seen some examples of that in the past. When something changes direction, its speed is zero. Um, so that means that kinetic energy five will be zero. Now, a little bit later, it'll have, it will have kinetic energy. It'll get more kinetic energy when it starts moving to the left. But at the instant that it's at maximum compression, it's just changing direction. The instant of maximum compression is changing direction. So at that instant, um, its speed is going to be zero. 